Ukraine is winning the war at sea. Kyiv promises Russia many new surprises. When Russia launched a full-scale invasion in February 2022, Ukraine had almost no navy. The only frigate, the Hetman Sahai Dashny, was sunk to prevent its capture by Russia. Two years later, Ukraine struggles to hold off a Russian offensive on land, but wins the war in the Black Sea and breaks a Russian blockade of its grain ships. The Economist writes about this. Ukraine's success often depends on rapid technological innovation. Every second, Navy relies on crewed ships, but Ukraine has created a fleet of unmanned boats. Before the war, in Ukraine, the most ambitious project was the Sea Hunter, a 40-meter ship that the US Navy has been developing since 2016. But the Ukrainian Navy is different from the American Navy. The country has pioneered the creation of a small, low-cost naval drones that are quick and easy to build and used for attack rather than force support. Naval analysts have documented 11 types based on videos and images of drones found, including a Magura V5 drone, but there may be more. Such UAVs attacked Russian patrol and transport vessels, warships, and even damaged the Kirsch Bridge, which connects occupied Crimea with Russia. Individual drones typically don't do much damage, but a few strikes can sink a ship. According to the publication's calculations, naval drones disabled about 10 Russian ships, including the Caesar Kunikov. The head of the main intelligence directorate of the Ministry of Defense of Ukraine, Kirill Budanov, claims that Ukrainian drones still have many surprises for the Russians. Private developers working in other countries can provide clues as to what those surprises might be. Four Turkish defense companies have developed an underwater kamikaze naval drone that can approach targets undetected and then emerge for a high-speed attack, the material says. Notably, while Ukraine's success on land with small drones has encouraged other militaries to invest more in their own drone programs, Ukraine's victories at sea have not led to a similar boom in maritime drones. True, with one exception. Russia has also begun to deploy such drones. As you know, Ukraine is actively using drones in the war with Russian occupiers. In particular, they play a big role in the battle for the Black Sea. The most frequently mentioned maritime drones in the media are Magura V5. They cost $500 million in damage to the Russian fleet. According to him, the process of improving these drones continues constantly. There is also another rumored maritime drone, Sea Baby, which is in service with the security service of Ukraine. Not so long ago, it became known that they were equipped with GRAD systems. The Ukrainian armed forces regained previously lost positions in the direction of Lipsy thanks to a successful counterattack. This is stated in the report of the American Institute for the Study of War. It is noted that geolocated footage published on June 10 shows that Ukrainian forces have regained positions along the Lipsy Kharkiv city road southeast of Hlybok. Several Russian mill bloggers claim that Ukrainian forces are counterattacking in the Lipsy direction, particularly near Hlybok, which is consistent with the available geolocated evidence. Russian soldiers run back en masse and even throw away the bodies of their fallen comrades. Russian and Ukrainian sources also reported continued fighting in Vovchansk, northeast of Kharkiv city, particularly in the area of the Vovchansk aggregate plant, and near Tyk and Vovchansky Kuteri. In addition, ISW reported that Russian forces recently advanced southeast of Kupyansk amid continued Russian ground attacks along the Kupyansk Svatov Kremina. Geolocated footage published on June 11 indicates that Russian forces recently advanced east of Stepova Novosilivka. The Russian Ministry of Defense and Russian mill bloggers claim that Russian forces seized the disincorporated settlement of Timkivka and Myasozarivka. Russian mill bloggers claim that Russian forces also advanced near Ivanivka and Andrivka, west of Svatov. ISW has not observed visual confirmation of any of these claims. Fighting continued northeast of Kupiansk near Sinkivka, southeast of Kupiansk near Pishchain. The same ISW report states that Russian occupation forces have again begun to use the Crimean bridge to transport fuel and logistics into occupied Crimea. Ukraine says that the enemy is concentrating his main efforts on the Pokrovsky and Kurakovsky directions. Fighting continues in the areas of temporary Yar, Kleshievka, Kalinovka. 
The enemy is trying to capture these settlements to expand the geography of their advance in the direction of Kramatorsk and Slavyansk. It is noted that the enemy unsuccessfully storms Belogorivka, which has become an eloquent example of the stability of the Ukrainian army in the Lugansk region. The enemy is rushing into Seversk from two directions, but each time they roll back, leaving the corpses of their soldiers. Ukraine says that in the Kharkiv direction, the enemy is conducting unsuccessful actions, trying to move forward into the depths of our combat formations and create a so-called security belt. In Volchensk, the enemy is bogged down, despite the attracted forces and means, which are constantly replenished from units in other directions. In the Krinka area, fighting continued for the maintenance of the bridgehead and control of the islands, without significant changes in the condition and position of the parties.